No. Okay. So, well, I would I would really like to welcome everybody for for joining us today. My name is Kevin Mahan, and I'm the vice president of sales and marketing for Jensen. Uh, we're excited that you wanted to hear what Kite Sato has to say about his journey that uh, he calls mastering monolithic. Um, so we're we're really excited that that you're joining us today. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before I introduce Kite. Um, we do have a lot of people joining us today, uh, which is very exciting, and we welcome that. Um, very likely, you'll have some questions for Kite along the way, and I will be uh, moderating this presentation. So I'm kind of the the MC, if you will. Um, you have a couple of ways to ask questions and kite you don't need to necessarily worry about reading them i'll read them um, at the end or if we feel it's appropriate we can read them along the way um, we do encourage you to ask them uh, through the chat function which is at the bottom of of your zoom window um, and also the q a so you really have a couple of of choices there to do that everybody's muted um, so that you can't speak because there are so many people uh, with us today it would just be too hard to to uh, have everybody try to talk. So we encourage you to ask the questions when they become top of mind. Um, if it's appropriate, Kite, it's it's okay for me to maybe raise right. my hand and, and yeah. ask a question. You. It's You're okay with it being interactive, which I think is yes. terrific. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> well, let me, let me say a little bit about Kite. It, it is really my honor um, to introduce you all to Kite Sato. Um, that's not a name you may have heard a lot before, but I promise you this, it is a name you will hear more and more uh, in the future because mm -hmm. Kite is, I, I think, uh, incredibly talented. And, you know, when, when you look for great educators and people that really make an impact uh, on your life uh, as it relates to dentistry, I, I think there's three things that make somebody really special. Their passion is important. Their skill, of course, is important. But their character, or what I might call their heart, is is very important. And um, I, I'm excited to say that Kite uh, has absolutely all three of those things, passion, skill, and heart. And uh, it's it's been uh, a fun journey getting to know Kite over the last eight or 10 months. You may recognize him from a Mio Connects video that we did with Don Cornell when when Kite came to visit us in Connecticut in the fall. Um, that's on YouTube and on a lot of social media platforms. Um, so you might recognize Kite from that, but it really is my honor to introduce him to the world today. Um, and uh, Kite was, was uh, born in Yokohama. You came to LA in 1997, if I'm not mistaken, from Japan to LA. Um, you attended LACC, so LA Community College for Dental Technology, uh, graduating in 2004, and then you joined the UCLA Master's Program, uh, graduating in 2011. And uh, I know, Kite, you worked in, in a number of high-end laboratories along the way, um, so you, you've got great experience today that I believe you can bring to the table in, in, your, in your presentation, what you're going to share. Most recently, Kite moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas in 2018 and works for uh, a high-end prosthodontic practice uh, as an in-house lab. You'll see the pictures that Kite will share with you. It is probably one of the nicest laboratories in the country, um, Ozark uh, Prosthodontics. So um, Kite, I, I am really honored to spend some time with you and I know everybody who's joining us today is as well. So I'm going to give the floor to you, if you'd like to to share your screen and make sure we're sharing uh, the computer sound, that would be terrific. Yeah, let me go ahead. Share this. Perfect. So welcome, Kite. Thank you for yes. joining us. Oh, thank you. First of all, let me say thank you, Kevin, and all the Jensen people, to give me this opportunity and having me here today. I really, it's my biggest pleasure in my whole career as a dental technician. And it's such a wonderful day. And I really appreciate your support 
and everybody from I know a lot of people from Janssen Dental worked hard, supported me for this to be happen, and really appreciate it from all my heart. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, um, like Kevin mentioned, most people don't know about me. So I like to introduce myself a little bit in the beginning and like to show <clears throat> what I do here on the daily work, uh, where I work, what kind of cases I do. And then I like to talk about how I get into this meal and using meal for my, for my daily work. Mm. I want to show you that how I my transition. And okay. It was a journey, it's safe, safe to say, right? It was a journey yes. uh, it with a lot of layering experience that you have. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a mind, it's a mindset journey too. I think you'll 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 show us. Yeah. Okay. So let me go ahead. Is that sure. okay? Absolutely. Okay, so here we go. My name is Kaito Saito. I moved from my hometown, Yokohama, Japan, to Los Angeles, 1997. And I completed a master ceramics program in UCLA. And currently, <clears throat> I'm working as in-house ceramist at Ozark Prosthodontics. Uh, we are nationally recognized prosthodontic practice doctors I'm working with, and they are highly skilled surgical prosthodontists. We mainly do a full mouth reconstruction with dental implants. And it is something that improves patients' quality of life. And oftentimes it becomes a life-changing experience for the patient. And let me show you the example of what we're doing here. I liked some case that I have done before. And this young lady, she was born with very weak enamel. And she had sensitivity and pain all over her mouth. And she couldn't even drink cold beverages. And uh, we made minimally layered zirconia crown on the prep tooth. Now she's got a beautiful smile. And I believe this is something that deserves for a beautiful young lady like her. And uh, in this picture, I would like you to pay attention, not only around her teeth and lips, but see her whole fa face. A, you see the big progress in her total expression. Like she looks like she wants to be exposed more. And uh, I really wanted to show her this picture with her eyes, but she looks so beautiful after the treatment is done. And uh, I'd like to show you one more case. This man was born without some teeth. And uh, we made full arch implant bridge on upper and lower arch, lower bridges were segmented into three pieces. And let me show you again, this is before the treatment. This is how he smiles before. And after the treatment, this is how he smiles. And uh, again, I like to show this photo, how he smiles before and after. And he looks like he gets yeah, much looks much younger, and he his total face changing. Like usually people go from right to left. No, no, left to right as as ages, but this this time go from right to left. Right, it's coming back to looking much younger, and he really proud of himself. Uh, and his family loves it. And uh, that made me so happy when the treatment is done. Okay. 
and I, everybody, uh, I think you, you guys can imagine the impact of uh, this type of treatment on his life. How he changed his life is very obvious looking from these pictures. Now, um, I like to share some problems we had for a long time. It bothers me, bothers my doctors and my patients. Um, after this full arch implant bridge case was delivered, and it came back with fractured porcelain. Here's another example of fractured porcelain. Here's another one. And we offer five year of guarantee, five year guarantee policy. That means we fix, repair at no cost for 60 months after delivery. So if you look at this policy, if you look at this, this what's happening here and looking from the business point of, of view, it's a big loss because it takes lots of time and cost to repair or remake this type of restoration. And even if the uh, incisal edge is protected by zirconia, inter all porcelain fracture happens sometimes. And um, let me show you, this is typical framework we used to make. Please pay attention how well the incisal edge is protected by zirconia. Like this, you see the cutback amount is very little, but still the porcelain fracture happens every once in a while and it bothers me a lot. So uh, to prevent this from happening, I started the uh, amount of porcelain, amount of layered porcelain, 0 0.8 millimeter to 0 0.5, then 0 0.3, and finally 0 0.2. At the same time, on the design part, the cutback, amount of cutback reduced, 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 and finally get 0 0.2. But it still happens sometimes, unfortunately. So um, now also another, another issue, another challenging part for me is as the thickness of the porcelain gets thinner and thinner, um, I face new challenge. H how can I establish good level of aesthetics if you only have 0 0.2 millimeter of space to lay your porcelain. And uh, this, I like to share this case with you. This is the case that uh, changed my mind completely. Before this case, honestly, I didn't like Neo at all. But after I done this case, I love Neo. For some reason, uh, this case, uh, we couldn't have enough facial tooth reduction for some clinical reason. And we had, I had only 0 0.2 millimeter to lay your porcelain. And otherwise the tooth looked very bulky. So uh, how I did this is I made a, minimally layered zirconia crowns, like uh, three quarters crown type of restoration, used Mio as an internal stain, internal character, characterization, and cover with a very thin layer of enamel. And see how, how that worked. And when I saw this case delivered, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Okay, so, the problem I've having and the issues I've been having with a porcelain fracture. This time I realized, okay, the answer is meal. 
And uh, I'm really glad I've done this case and this became like a turning point. And it made me really believe that meal really works. And uh, <clears throat> as you know, as you can see, I'm into meal ever since. Okay, now I started thinking about using meal to make fully monolithic restoration for the full arch implant bridges. And my idea is to utilize high aesthetic standard that Mio can offer and to make full arch bridge restoration that does not chip. Okay. And uh, I learned I learned this Mio technique from Don Cornell and James Choi. I really admire their hard work for creating Mio system. They are great technicians, and I guarantee you learn a lot from their online and hands-on courses. And for someone who is new to Mio, who's watching this right now, I like to share some uh, share what I have learned and how I do this, okay? And here, the green state preparation is very important step for the following reasons. Number one, bring the milled zirconia as close to its final shape as possible. And number two, establish all sharp angles before it's sintering, because this is the last time you can do this. I use uh, pre-colored zirconia for this case. So applying coloring liquid on embrasures helps adding some chroma without disturbing the sharp angle I just mentioned. Uh, I don't wanna add any meal color in embrasure. Um, because that, that will uh, disturbing the sh sharp angles I created on the green state. Now, uh, if you look on the gingiva area, pink coloring, pink coloring liquid is applied and a little bit of A1 liquid was applied where the roots are. Incisal enhancer is applied on incisal edge. Let's look at the, this restoration after sintering. Look like this. So again, you want to establish the, the final shape. Uh, Sinta zirconia should look like final restoration, except color and texture. That is uh, what I like to point out when I show this picture. Now, um, here's angled view. You see how the final shape is established. All the embrasures, sharp angle. And when I see this, okay, I'm ready to go to the next step. So here, um, I apply the fissure in between the teeth to enhance the perception of depth. Fissure is the only thing I put in between the teeth. I don't put anything else because I want, I want to keep the sharp, sharp angle as is, just like I said. And from here, I apply glaze paste first. And uh, I want you to pay attention to the surface so smooth and it's, it should be an even application. And after this, I use marmalon coral was applied for the base shade and the trans smoke for the contrast. After the application of base shade and contrast, the restoration looked like this. And again, I want you to look on the surface so smooth. Then uh, after this, I add character on the incisal edges. 
I use mamelon wheat, halo spring, mixture of mamelon wheat and halo spring, and snow. And now I'm ready to add character on tissue. When I work on tissue, I like to look at pictures of natural tissue. And uh, this is a picture I like to share with you, how beautiful the natural gingiva look like. And it's, it has lots of personality and character. And uh, I love to work Many of those pictures always show up on my screen when I'm working with me or, or, or any, any type of work. And um, let me go to the next photo. And as you can see, just like teeth, tissue character and uh, colors are different from person to person. This, you will notice this very strong personality on this particular patient teeth, the, how the teeth look and the, how the tissue look, it's, it's very, very strong personality. And uh, let me show you one more case here. And uh, whoa, this is so beautiful. I love this. And uh, this time for this particular case, I try to mimic the character of this patient. So I put this picture on my screen, big screen, when I work on a meal. And uh, I see a trans raspberry kind of color on this area, right? So uh, I put, put those on the same area first. And then I add trans copper on where the roots are. After that application, the restoration looked like this. And uh, after I put this character first, I go to the base shade of the tissue. I used mixture of Merlot and linen for the base shade. And after firing, It looked like this. And after the tissue color fired, I go to add very thin layer of structure. They are applied here. And after the firing, it will restoration look like this. And I like to mention all my firing um, I follow the firing chart that recommended by the manufacturer and it's available online. And uh, I don't make any special program or anything. I just use the recommended recommendation straight. Okay. And from here, I use using the diamond burr. I shave teeth a little bit and add some texture. Then I text and then I fire the restoration one more time without adding glaze paste on teeth. The restoration looked like this after firing. And um, now, I feel like I wanted to change the texture character of the tissue a little bit. And let's go back to this picture one more time. Like I said, I just, I wanted to mimic the character of this particular patient, particular tissue. So I try my best and add uh, a little more structure on the tissue to make it look like my target. Then I fire the restoration one more time. And after the final firing and polishing, the restoration looked like this. 
Mm. I did my best and uh, I like it. <laughs> okay. So let's look this from the from this angle. You can see the texture on teeth a little bit better. So now um, I like to compare this restoration to layer the porcelain, like I the way I used to do. Uh, this full arch implant bridge has 0.5 millimeter cutback and layer the porcelain on the top of it. This is 0.5 millimeter cutback versus zero cutback. And I really like this result. So I decided to apply this technique to my clinical cases. And I got very good feedback from both doctors and patients. And in addition, I I could finish the case approximately 50% faster when I use meal than I do the traditional layering. So in the end, I realized that meal can dramatically reduce the risk of interall porcelain fracture, and it can increase my productivity and I can achieve the aesthetics that I expect as a master ceramist. And I can achieve the aesthetic that doctors expect, expecting. And I can achieve the aesthetic that patients expect me to do. And I can have all those three with me. And that's amazing. That's what I realized in the end of my Neo journey. So far, yeah, that's 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 it. And uh, now I like to sh share short one minute video with you that I like to dedicate uh, to David McNeil, who was involved in this practice. Uh, he was Dr. McNeil brother. David and I worked together. He helped me and supported me a lot in many different ways. And he bought me lunch, dinner, and lots of beer using his brother's credit card. And he was such a nice person. But I decided and I like to dedicate this short film in this honor. Would you join me watching this together, please? Thank you very much. Well, Kai, th thank you for, for sharing all, all of that. Um, we're going to open it up for, for questions now and, and make it interactive, which we've allowed uh, time for, which is great. Um, you know, but first, I, I, I appreciate um, you dedicating that to David. I, I clearly, uh, you can see how much he meant to you and, and to everybody there. and and uh unexpectedly you lost david uh, earlier this year um so i i can tell that means a lot to you so thank you for sharing that that part of your life with us as well um because it all interrelates doesn't it 
Yes. Yeah. I, I can tell he was a special guy. I've met him uh, a couple of times, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. a, a special guy for sure. Um, so we're going to open it up for, for question and answer and some chatting um, now. And, and I've got a, a bunch of questions already. So Kite, I'm going to I'm going to ask you uh, uh, some questions on behalf of, of our audience. Um, sure. And I, I can some of them I, you know, I might answer on the corporate side, but um, we'll get your perspective as well. So um, the first question is, is Mio for zirconia only or can it be used on Emacs as well? And, and the, oh. the answer is it can be used on both. Um, yeah. Both Zirconi and Emacs. Kite, do you have? Uh, do you use Emacs in in your laboratory and the practice now at all? Not much. We mainly do Zirconia, but I have one doctor who sending me case, and he loves Emacs. He doesn't want to do Zirconia. He loves. He wants to do everything with Emacs, and he uh, he mainly sends me a Emacs veneer case, and he wants to be layered. So mm -hmm. I use Mio and those Emacs veneer, many, many of you realize that you don't have much space for technician to layer, especially for veneer, because the, the restoration itself needs to have certain thickness. And most of, most of doctors very shy on prep, mm -hmm. which, is, which is good for patients. But uh, for technician side, give you lots of headache. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do use Mio on the mm. on the Emacs cases, and it works as good as on Zirconia too. Mm. You know, you know that the the point you bring up is a good point, Kite. In that mm. you know, oftentimes we don't get enough reduction, right? So that uh, mm. the the, the thickness of the restoration may not be mm -hmm. ideal for us. And when you're trying to maintain the, the good practice of the right amount of porcelain on top of, mm -hmm. of Emacs, right? So that mm -hmm. we, we don't get cracking or, or any issues there. Um, that can be a challenge. So the, the, I think one of the benefits of Mio is that you can press that, that veneer or, or that mm -hmm. crown to full contour or mill it if you're milling it. Um, and because Mio, I, on average, how how much Mio in terms of dimension do you think you're adding to, you know, to uh, uh, an Emacs veneer? Oh, the thickness you're talking about, very right. little. I cannot even measure, but it should be very very little. Yeah, zero point one or point point zero one, uh -huh. right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So, oh, so and there. I like to mention, sorry, I like sorry to interrupt. But I like Please. to mention one more, but uh, I think it's on the doc doctor's side, I think it's kind of trend to for them to do conservative prep mm. means don't give you much tooth reduction. Try to be conservative as possible. I think that's a trend, especially younger doctors mm. in younger generation. I never seen them prep like 1.5 millimeter on facial. Mm -hmm. So so on the, this trend, Mio works very, very nice because you can do a lot in the within the limited space. And that's on on that of. topic, do you do you have a different firing program for lithium for an Emacs compared to zirconia? Same. I use the same, same okay. temperature. So for you, oh. that 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 works. It's um, I I know uh, lithium disilicate is a is a has a different uh, heat sink, right? It's it has different oh. ther thermal characteristics, so it absorbs heat differently um, mm. than mm. than zirconia. It's not a great conductor of of mm. heat. Um, yeah, but thank you for that. So so to to answer, uh, his name's Kevin. Good name, Kevin. Um, that answers your question about uh, zirconia and Emacs. It can be used for both. Mm. Um, Devor asks uh, Kite, how do you deal with structure material? How do you prevent from slumping? Slumping, what, what is slumping, sorry. Uh, slumping, uh, moving, shifting. Um, ah, I guess slump, slumpy. Ah. 
if it's so, if you feel it slumpy, maybe too much water, I guess. Right. Mm. Right. Mm. So I'm in the of moisture, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. In the when when you open, probably when you opened your Mio structure for the first time, it looks dried mm. out. It looks mm. uh clumpy, and that's because it's a has a different viscosity and it's a thixotropic material. So you need to pat it or we might say massage it without adding liquid. So Devor, if it's if it's slumping, um, maybe you introduce some moisture to it or to the surface because mm. typically structure stays exactly where you put it, Kite. I think, um, mm. it, would you agree? Yes, yes, I do agree. And uh, oh. I think James Choi has a video and you can look on the YouTube explaining mm -hmm. that part very well. Mm. In, in fact, um, all of the little details, like the paracamata, mm -hmm. um, we we put in wet are are maintained uh, during firing, right? So, yep, that's a fair question. Okay, uh, Katya asks, um, is Mio compatible with all zirconia products? Um, you mean all different kinds of brand of zirconia? Correct. I think so. I think so. Yes. I think so. Yes, um, that that is correct. Uh, mm -hmm. All all zirconia materials, and I. So Michelle asks, it's related. Um, do you use multicolored zirconia or not? So maybe share with folks the type of zirconia you're using. Mm. I see. For the uh, single crowns on prep tooth, I like to use multi multi layer zirconia. And the small span bridge, like three units, four units, maybe five units on the lower anterior, I probably use multi layer zirconia. But for the long span, full arch, I use monochromatic mm. uh, three by four Y zirconia, which has like 1200, which manufacturer says 1200 strength. That's what I use. Okay. And uh, so, uh, which is great. There's a bunch of questions, which is awesome. So obviously folks are getting a lot out of this by, by the questions we're seeing. Um, while on the same topic of, of zirconia and multicolored or, or multi-layered, um, somebody did ask the questions, um, what, what liquids do you use to color your zirconia? Um, I think in the, in the oh, green oh. state. Okay, I use uh, the one from uh, Zircon Zan or base shade, uh, A shade, A1, B1. I use, mainly use those two, A1 or B1. And if you want a more chroma, I add an extra coat on top of it. And uh, for the incisal, edge area, the, those effects, the blue effects. I use the liquid from uh, Origin. Also, uh, Zircon Zan has those blue and gray violet. I think the, mm. they, they make uh, those three kinds of um, liquid on the market. Would you, those, you know what, so somebody's asking, would you pull up the, um, go back to that slide, uh, if you don't mind, where, where you showed the, the green state, if, if you're comfortable uh, backing up? Sure. Yeah, that would, so as we talk about it, there you go, yeah. Sorry. This one? Yeah, yep, great. Perfect. Okay. Hmm. So the, the blue that you have there uh, is, was which material? Okay, you talking about this area? On the incise, oh yeah, yep, great, perfect. I use Origin. Okay. An incisal enhancer. Okay, it's yes. called in, incisal enhancer. I think so. I can. Cool. I think so. Yes. No, no, that's okay. They, they, um, they make a couple different by the number 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, and the larger the number, stronger the effect. Okay. And this one, I think I use 
3.0, 2 .5. Okay. And uh, if I do this again, I, I would put a little more effect. Hmm. I think this, this time I was a little shy <laughs> on, on this incisal edge area. Yeah, I would put more if I do it again. Okay. Hmm. So, so is the, it, was this zirconia unshaded to start or was there a base shade? This is multi-layer uh, A2. Okay, so mm -hmm. the the one of the questions. This is all good timing. Um, you you can infuse additional color to a pre-shaded mm -hmm. zirconia without getting a an adverse effect. Mm -hmm. um, okay, okay, okay. That's good. Um, can you pull up the uh, the picture where you have the the uh, meo structure? on the tissue textured because Joshua is asking, could you share some tips and tricks to achieve that tissue texture? Tissue texture. Ah. So it's always good. Yeah, we'll pull it up and look right at it while you while you talk to it. Okay. This one, yes, it, it looked like structure applied on teeth and tissue at the same time. But if I do now, I use high fusing structure enamel on teeth, finish teeth first, and then structure for pink later. So I do two separate firing. But uh, sorry, this, this applied on. And that, time that's, and a, that's a trick you learned from Don. So <laughs> If, if if anybody listening to this is uh, uses Mio now, mm. we do have a high fusing uh, mm. enamel structure and window, um, so that you could fire the teeth separately and then go do the tissue mm. um, without them being similar temperatures. Um, so how how and I think Joshua is curious how you achieve that that texture um, oh, in the structure. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah, like uh, like the master, like James Choi, he do with a brush. Mm. He applies some texture with brush before firing, right? And after the firing, I saw it with my eyes how James did. And after firing, ooh, it's it's there. Everything is there. But uh, obviously, I'm not James, so I do different different differently. I just apply structure first, fire look like this mm. and i add texture using the diamond bar i adjust a little bit of a shape contouring make sure the line angle is okay and then i add texture by using diamond bar mm. and fire one more time which is you know Mio stands for make it your own. So there's a lot of different ways to achieve uh, yeah. an outcome. And I, and I think that's great that you show that kite because um, yeah. you, you know, I think that the final uh, result is spectacular. And a lot of people are commenting that, that, that the case you're showing is, is absolutely beautiful. Um, but what's neat is you, you know, you took a, uh, you didn't do it all with a brush. You, you, on the teeth, you, you ground it in, and that's absolutely fine to do with with structure. It works, yeah. and it feels terrific when you're doing it. Right? It's a very, uh, yes. it's it's a it's a very durable material structure. It's uh -huh. very unique, very yeah. dense. Yes, it is. So, as far as the the uh, tissue goes, that that mm -hmm. texture, did you do yes. it with a with like a stippling brush or? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I did. Yep. And uh, I think Jensen has a very nice brush to add in texture on the tissue. Mm. Also, there are a lot of people using, want to use different sure. favorite, favorite brush or whatever, but uh, I, I have the one brush from Jensen which that works good. Which we call a stippling brush, right? It was designed specifically for mm. 
uh, yeah. you know, for for that. So is that how? And you know, the shot you have from the from the side. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, that's that. I think also does a great job showing the texture uh, mm -hmm. both on the tissue and, and the teeth as well. That's a beautiful angle. Yeah. So maybe maybe that that helps a little. So so you you fire um, your now with the high fusing enamel. You fire hmm. your teeth you, the structure on teeth first, and then you go back yes. and and do mm -hmm. the tissue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, somebody's asking uh, around uh, the 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 uh, the interface between the tissue and the teeth. Um, how you got that smoother, um, right? Uh, where the where the tissue meets meets the teeth in the in the cervical oh, area there in the embrasure where oh, okay. the area oh it's uh, let me show you this one at this at this point it's you see it's already it's kind of smooth already and then when you apply um, structure. After you apply structure on the gingiva, the cervical area, I don't use those brush on the this area because I want to keep it smooth. Let me show you. Hmm. Maybe this picture you can see. I I didn't add, especially if you look at the CEJ area of tooth number nine you see those areas already smooth before firing this is right before firing and don't have much texture on those area mm. and uh, some people add gray space here before firing that will also make make the those area very smooth i think okay mm. so uh yeah, lot, lots of good questions coming. So you're making a lot of people think here. Um, one person asked, uh, how many times did you fire that that case that you're showing now? Okay, so t uh, teeth, three times for coloring, one, two, three times for structure, I think. Mm -hmm. mm. So six, so, six. Mm, mm six times um yeah. are are you doing it any different and this was i know you, you did a few months ago and you're learning yeah. you know more yeah. and more um do you still on average do you do you fire it that many times or do you do it less now or more actually i i can do it less i can do the tissue color on one firing at the base shade and character all together and fire at once but mostly Teeth and tissue, uh, you can also do teeth and tissue coloring, same time. Mm, sometimes, uh, so but probably twice, twice for okay. teeth color and uh, twice for the structure. So maybe four, four times. Four, okay. Four to six. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, R Richard asks, uh, did I hear you mention a second glaze firing with no glaze? What, what does that achieve? Please explain and thank you. Oh, okay. So um, second time glaze without glaze paste, correct? So after, is he asking, hold on. Maybe was it after you textured the, the teeth? After and, and this. Yep. After this. Yeah. I I fire one more time on okay. exact same program. Okay. Without I think, and, adding. Mm. Richard, if that yeah. answered your question, great. If it didn't, feel free to to you know to uh, type it in again or or ask a different question. I I think that's what he was referring to was here. So you. Mm -hmm. You adjusted this after firing your structure, um, and and then you you fired it on the same program again. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, so Kayla asks, 
uh, how, how can I keep certain characteristics from fading or blending when trying to match an adjacent natural tooth, um, i.e. adding striations using snow to mimic decalcification? Hmm. So oh, I'll, I'll say it again. Hmm. How, how do I keep certain characteristics from fading or blending when trying ah. to match natural teeth? Again, um, amount of the consistency is is very important. If uh, other words, in, in other words, if the meal is too loose, it's it's easy to go get slumpy and uh, um, faded or mixed. So it takes some practice, mm. like. Don Cornell mentioned play color on color, like, like before without firing. You know, like how he explains like a play, applying color on color and play yeah, with floating, it. Yeah, floating yeah. color on color. Flo yep. Floating color on color. Yes, yes. I, yeah. this, I think there's a YouTube video or something that showing that. And I think the person he or she can learn from watching the video and how he mm. how he his brush moves floating a color on color also james Choi, he's he's very mm -hmm. good at it and i think i i saw james is explaining that technique on the on the some kind of tutorial video and so you're I think. you're right you know the they're the, the Mio colors are manufactured with a with a specific viscosity, mm -hmm. which which helps them to float color on top of color. Mm -hmm. And when we when we disrupt that viscosity, adding more liquid to it, it, it changes, obviously, and it, it, it makes it more difficult. Um, I, you know, kite from everything I've learned from Don and James and you, mm -hmm. it, it, it seems um, that one thing that's important is to apply just a, a thin base layer of glaze paste because it gives you mm. a good canvas to float those colors on. Um, but it has right. a lot to do with the, the brush you use, how much material mm. you pick up, and, and Kayla, how much pressure you, you put uh, and the mm. angle of the brush to the surface mm. when you're applying the material. And, and it it does take, mm. there are some great videos, like Kite said, mm. Um, mm. that demonstrate that. But if the viscosity isn't right, it's mm. going to be a lot, a lot harder. You're right. Um, so I think that hopefully, Kayla, that that helps. Mm. Um, if Also, if, the yeah. tip of the brush, don't, don't touch the zirconia or restoration. It's it barely, barely, barely touches and just. So don't push the, are you saying don't push the brush through? Mm -hmm. uh, float, like float the color off the brush onto without I pushing, mean, when you, touching. When you float, float the color on color, the tip of the br brush don't touch the zirconia. If the tip of the brush touches the zirconia or Emacs, whatever the material, core material. I think you put pushing too much. Good advice. Good advice. Mm. Yeah. Um, Sven asks, how do you store uh, Mio liquid ceramics? Do you use some kind of mixing tray and leave it covered up? Or do you mix it every time from scratch? Before I use, I open and mix, <laughs> mix every time. So you so don't uh, have a, a tray that you store the material material uh, in? No. Okay. No, I don't. Every okay. time I pick up something that I need. So you do it right from the jar? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's yes. If there's any other way, uh, I want I want to learn how, how how they people do. Yes. Yeah. No, Maybe that's that's a special <laughs> special kind of way to keep it as as good good consistency for a long time. That'll be very convenient. But uh, 
I mix it every every time. Got it. Um, let's see. Let's see what other questions we have. Uh, by the way, uh, Luciana, maybe that's who you were thinking of from uh, the the name that started with an L. She said, uh, "Thank you so much for your your time and knowledge. Great work, great material. Um, love Mia." And uh, Bart saying, "Beautiful work uh, as well." Um, let's see. Uh, how many? So Kevin asks, um, "How many cases can you finish daily?" using Mio and how long are your firing cycles, including slow cooling? Oh, each firing takes about a, about a one hour. The whole firing? Mm, yes. How, how come so long? Uh, because I increased the dry time a little bit. Gotcha. Yes, I said I fo follow the manufacturer's recommendation, but sorry, I increased the dry time longer, maybe even 12, 12. even safer, even safer. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and after the tray, after the firing, the tray comes down. I leave it for a while. Ah. Uh, I don't take out right away. I leave it for a while. Right. So it takes about one. 50 minutes to 60 minutes, but I have two, two furnaces. Right, so while right. I'm, while I'm cooking one, I can cook another one on the second furnace. Cook, cook, cook another mm. one. I like that. Mm. That's a good mm. term. I, I think the, the, a lot of that time is the cooling time because of the, the zircon, the, you know, the, the zir nature of zirconia cooling. Um, it's not Mio related necessarily, but you know, the average Mio, firing program kevin is is about 20 minutes um without the you know the the back end of the cooling time um so you you you've got an interesting i know you didn't share how many cases which i respect but um compared to layering mm. how, how does your meo production look uh compared to layering so the number of restorations uh -huh. in a in a month or day compared to Mio compared to layering. Hmm. For the speed or amount of production, probably I can I can do fifty percent faster. Hmm. That, that means I can pro produce fifty percent more in the same period period of working time. Okay. And as far as the number of that I need to finish by day. Um, honestly speaking, I, I, there's no set number here because this is in-house, there's a clinic downstairs and uh, we have uh, four, four doctors. And sometimes I have to go downstairs, take a picture, take a shade, lots of many hours I spend taking picture here. And so there's no set number I have to finish but uh, uh, wh whatever the incoming case, I have to finish before the due date, right? And uh, mm -hmm. I'm always on time. Uh, so I don't know if that answers his question, but um, mm -mm, I'm not the fastest technician at all <laughs> to tell you well, the truth. Yes. I, 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 well, it's the, 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 the level of aesthetics and the the beauty that you're creating, I think, I, I probably speak for everybody when I say it's uh, it's spectacular. You know, to see the case you're showing here, and and actually, it's it's hard for your mind to grasp that uh, it's it's monolithic, right? Because when when we look at it, it just looks so vital, and there's depth, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it 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 plays with your mind a little bit. Um, and, and that's, and I know we're, we're at almost four o'clock, um, Eastern standard time. Um, there, there was an interesting question that somebody asked that I would like to, uh, to ask you kite. Yes. And, and the question was, this was, um, what was the hardest thing to overcome as a ceramist do, as you did more monolithic? So ah. what was the hardest thing for you to overcome? The pr 
prejudice? How, how you call it? Do I say it right? Like you, the, you yeah, have you a, prejudice. You see, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have set mind. Oh, when you hear the monolithic, when you he hear the word monolithic, lot of, lot of ceramists automatically think no good. Mm. And so uh, you had a little I, of that. You uh, had a little yes, of that. Yeah, I, I didn't like it at first. Honestly, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> honestly, I I didn't like it at all first because most most of ceramists love to lay up porcelain, right? And uh, many people believe that it looks looks better compared to monolithic. So, like the case I showed you. Um, when I said like this case become became a like a turning point uh, mm. until I do, do this until I did this case, I didn't like it. But mm. when I see this result, wow, Mio, Mio does some good job, <laughs> and so like seeing is believing, like mm. how you can do how how what kind of outcome the meal can offer i and, didn't and, believe and, un until i see this with with my eyes and you're you're uh in a great environment because you're not just seeing it on your bench but you're seeing it mm. intraorally right so yes what yes. what what kind of feedback do you get from the doctors um and and how do you feel seeing it intraorally, uh, you know, monolithic with Mio versus layered? Uh, at first, I switched to the uh, monolithic restoration from layer, re layered restoration to monolithic restoration without telling anybody, any doctor. I didn't tell any doctor. <laughs> and they didn't notice. They didn't notice until I tell them. Hmm. Interesting. Have you had any fail any failures with uh, Mio on, on your monolithic since you've done that? No chipping, no... No, no chipping, obviously. Yeah. And uh, no, no rejection from the patient or doctor either. Nice, nice. Mm. No, yes. good. So, I, I kind I would like to thank you, and and um, I it, it was again an, an honor to be with you uh, in your de debut presentation. Um, I know it won't be your last. Uh, I know you're going to be joining us uh, uh, at Lab Day West. If any of you are, are out west listening to this, kite will be. Um, at Lab Day West with Jensen, uh, giving a presentation and spending some time at our booth. Um, but Kite, I'd love I'd love to share uh, just some of the feedback. I'll I'll read it very briefly as we close here. But oh, thank um, you. you know, beautiful work, Kite. Uh, thank you for a great presentation. It's been very helpful. Brilliant work. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your answers. Great presentation. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Thank you for a great presentation. A great job, Kite from OP Little Rock. Does that do they does that ring a bell? <laughs> okay. Um, lots of great. I mean, just tons and tons of of thank yous and uh, um, so I I uh, I think I, I speak for everybody when when I say great job, Kite. Um, thank you. Thank you. If you want to go to your last slide, if every you know you 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 share your your Instagram uh, account yes. and and your Facebook, right? Yeah. How to find you on Facebook yes. and Instagram? Yes, I love to be connected with people, and exchange thoughts and ideas, any comments, and uh, any comments are welcome, and uh, constructive and non-constructive criticism. Uh, also welcome. So, well, thank you, thank you very much, Kite. Um, 
And and in in closing, it Angela, let's see, we had uh, Angela says thank you for your honest opinions. I'm sorry for the loss of your friend. So um, thank you, thank you. Appreciate. I know I know she's not alone, but I I hope mm. everybody enjoyed uh, Kite's presentation. Mastering Monolithic, we will make the recording available. Um, you should get a link to that tomorrow, uh, maybe even sooner. And uh, I know Kite will be seeing more of you. So uh, congratulations on a, a great presentation and have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care.